wrong. It'd be risky though. They think about it, they say, okay, the risk is too high. It's gonna be a Morgana. Most likely Morgana's okay. turret dive is gonna be very successful if Grace takes aggro. Well, he's gonna jump in there. Khan does have the ultimate running. He's gonna flash back under the turret. Not sure what he was trying to do, but it didn't work. Really, re you gotta let it happen. Remember, Prey's been playing League for a long time. He can do this. That's a free Drake. Going over to Umpty Grace. No longer goes down and cooldown is pretty attractive. Oh, Bear Trap on a rope working out really well here in the mid lane though, as Grace does have the Dominus pop. Oh. Flash is still there, Lamb's Respite works perfectly, but the headbutt, and Grace is just executed. Gorilla plays it beautifully and has the level six, but is it going to be enough? It's only rank one, Stopwatch is there to keep him alive, but the barrel almost gets oh. there. Umpty needs the auto, oh. Flash just doesn't get it finally. He's able to pick that one up, but has he overextended as Nova makes his way in. See you later, Kindred, but they're all on Underneath the turret, BDD uses the untargetability beautifully as Prey does get exhausted under this turret. Extend, but in comes the rest of King Zone. Vision of Empire does get a flash, but it's good dark binding. Gorilla has to use the ultimate as in goes Grace. No, oh, does have the flash available actually. And Gorilla gives himself up. So on is going to get in here. Didn't have to use the flash as the ultimate. It's basically nil as a comp. They've got mid lane Kled, the top lane Mundo, the Vladimir. I guess if he can walk up to a mini wave, but otherwise. He wave clear options. Remember when it was in the mid lane. However, speaking of which, he's going to get ganked up towards the top side. So on does have the barrel available, but it didn't really do anything. And they're just charging underneath this turret. Khan probably didn't want to be the one tanking, but BDD didn't even need to get off Skull. It's going to be traded for an Ocean Drake, but this should be a turret going over to King Zone, and they'll be able to even out that turret trade. Further examination, though, is if Juno can get the bot lane turret and end up with one extra thing, a kill for a Drake, you'll take the Drake. If you're Jinnet, and honestly, for King Zone, with the scaling, maybe you'll settle for the gold. So it's all a bit of six and two threes. Is my that the minion wave? And Khan... Just looking for a dive. Oh, Mundo. Oh, God. There's just no Grievous Wound, so it's just so depressing to watch. As Peanut's going to pick up the turret aggro, this could be the opportunity for Soan. He's actually pretty tanky, and he's going to walk his way out. That Drunken Rage buff feels really good for the Gragas. So for King Zone, pretty big macro mistake. Yeah. Didn't feel like the great option, however, is going to be a one-for-one -one trade as far as those turrets. Timing here as well for Grace, who's able to walk over to this Ocean Drake with his two items freshly purchased. 40 CS lead there as well as BDD has. And an item is rapid fire cannon, but we're not going to talk about items for a moment. Here comes Gorilla. Yeah, Hepa Pulp comes down. Another charge comes in here as Grace is able to dance with the arrows to get his way out. And so on. Does get the ultimate, but BDD is going to get over that wall. No worries. Khan is going to let. Oh, ultimate will be necessary here from Umpty, but just decides that he's not going to use it. Lamb's respite just stays off cooldown. He knew that he wasn't going to survive anyway. Okay, someone's going to body slam his way in and out at the same time and has to flash to get himself over. I still think he hasn't done enough work. Body slam gets the reset, though. With all those extra points, he is able to survive. Khan standing underneath the turrets, but the rest of the team not so lucky. And Grace, he's going to split push. Long cooldown on the Lambs respite. Omti doesn't use a huge damage cap. It's a Swain. He wants to get, you know, work done zoning. Try and create room for the rest of the damage dealers on his team. And it's all about Umpty really pumping about out consistent damage in this fight from a good position as Jinnah have started the fight once again. And Khan getting taken down dangerously low. Stopwatch is there, but not healing him for that much given the Grievous Wounds that is on top. Gorilla is going to jump in. It's a decent pulverize. And we've got crazy amounts of chaos in the middle of the fight. So Soul Shackles breaks up King Zone. And Khan once again taking the brunt of the damage. Charge just to get Continue to zone and so much zone with the Swain and the Morgana. They take the Infernal and do Jinnair fully disengage. Easy to disengage from them. As okay, the charge is going to jump down onto Teddy. Could be in trouble, but Zonyas comes in. Demonic Ascension already there as well and getting a lot of work done. Hemo Plague comes down. Teddy gets his way over the wall, but Jinnair looked to have successfully disengaged and the Swain grabs the kill. So one jumps forward. They want Khan yet again and Umpty has found him. Red buff is on. He's getting slowed down. Meanwhile, the fight is happening on the top side as well. Khan will fall down and Peanut is just body blocking for the rest of the King's own members, but Jinnair, they found their fight. And Teddy's so used to position against his Kled. Two games in a row, he's happy to be in the front. He had his stasis, he had the black shield. They win that fight very handedly. They get the inner turret, and what more can Jinna get? during these death timers. Yeah, well, they're looking for the inhibitor turret first. Remember, they've got a lot of damage on these structures, and they're even able to break the base in two places. This could be back-to-back Jinnah -back versus King Zone games where Jinnah get up in game number one. Remember, this was a team zero and eight before the start of this week. 
After that one victory over BBQ, looking much better, much cleaner. Who has the ability to live a lot longer. Speaking of living a long time. Yeah, Peanut not going to be doing so as that barrel was beautiful. Grace is going to pick up the kill, but that was all about Soan, who's looking to try and get himself back from the call on the bad KDA. Baron looks like an opportunity now as Teddy throws down Demonic Ascension just to get rid of the other members of Kingzone. It's a nice tool for Kingzone to pick up for this Baron contest. They have no smite, have no ability to move over to smite. They need to fight. Where's the charge? Well, there's going to be a lot of health missing on this Baron buff. We'll see whether the turn does come in as Umpty gets himself into the middle of the fight. Oh no, Prey has to use Sanguine Pool very early in this battle as the Lamb's Respite is in there and Umpty's surviving for so long. Vladimir just taken down. No pull, no worries for Jin Air as BDD gets er eradicated from the fight. Gorilla comes in with a headbutt pulp to get rid of the Morgana, but this is a desperation play at best from King Zone and Jin Air will get the Baron. Or I will they? Looking for a very speculative steal. Yeah, well, he's going to be able to get in there, but it's at not smite range at the moment. And that's another free mark going over to the Kindred, not to mention another jungler missing and another big buff for Jin Air. Such a low percentage move from Peter. wave clear is abysmal. Some of the communication also. We saw the Alistair walking up. You have to wait for your Alistair to put down a control ward, then judge the situation. Bottom side, but that wave is pushing forward for Jin Air, and they just want to take these open inhibs. They'll just move themselves in, park themselves with their barrened up minions. So much damage now as well. Doesn't matter about scaling when you have a four stack elder. Yeah, it's disgusting. Not to mention the fact that Grace has built full damage. Sterix there, his only defensive option. He's got a GA. He's feeling real good. Doesn't even have to hit these Nexus turrets because they've got double siege, triple siege minion yep. beating down on them. And Gorilla, not a whole lot he can do. They're going to start the fight once again, but Kingzone are already melting. Good God, is that a tanky Mundo? I don't think so. As Jinna just eat through the Kingzone lineup, the Nexus will get taken out as well. And once again, Jinna are victorious in game one. Jinna do exactly what they need to do. They're thinking about it, and wow. it will be the cannon. The Khan Kenny. So a ranged champion to try to deal with the Gragas in the top lane. I wonder if... Well, Umpty is going to be here for the counter gank, because there's the ultimate from Kuz. Can they get him out of the way, though? And the stun is good. Gorilla makes his way down, but Grace is now in safety, and Teddy turns up. Umpty grabs the first blood, and everyone collapsed from Jin Air. They're still looking for more, though, as Gorilla, oh. trying to get out of their stopwatch, is a real bad idea. He's going to get slowed down and destroyed. Does manage to get his way out, but he's just going to get pulled back in. Such is the Jin Air comp. More probably wanted the extra damage there from BDD. Knock up, not going to land. And that is the go button for Khan. Wants to find it and does so. BDD grabs that kill. Jin Air, are they actually going to take the land? No, they're not. As Nova was looking for a play, but the rest of the team, they weren't. They were never able to add Injury in. for Jin Air. So really good turnaround. King Zone back in the tempo driver's seat. Nova tried to make the big play. Set up a four-man last breath, but... Not able to. And again, we're not too worried about the late game here for Jinnah. Seems like they have options. Uh, Grace doesn't want to die solo here, but he might. Yep. Uh, Windwall does come in. The flash goes over as BDD. He's going to escape the ultimate, but not much else, as I think Umpty should be able to get there. The turret comes down. Portal Jump is going to troll BDD, and eventually he's going to get taken down. Umpty gets the assist. Yeah, the Asuo wants to find a side lane, but speaking of side lanes, Kingzone going to have to use everything to get out of this one. Umpty looking for more. Gorilla going down low as the stuns are landing. There's so much CC as Demon Flare is just going to erupt very early. Stopwatch from Teddy as Umpty's body blocking and Prey can't grab that kill. Some on Namakon Sorcerer shoots. He has double magic pen and he desperately wants to find access to the back line. So, um, gotta be in a cop salad. A chick cream of chicken soup, I guess, but this could be another soupy option here in the mid lane as well as Grace gets taken down very low, takes a lantern ride, is going to survive. It's a lot of buttons, but not a lot of action as Teddy wants to turn that one around. Vision of Empire doesn't get too much as Gorilla's able to disengage as well. And the re-engage comes down from Kuz. Might have been a bad idea. He flashes out, but Umpty has flashed after him. Nova grabs the kill as the wind wall's beautiful to keep everyone alive on Jin Air. Prey over the side Watch though, Khan. and BDD gets more. In goes Khan, good exhaust from Nova once again as the hook takes down the Zoe. Nova's popping off. He will die in the end, but it looked like a whole lot of fun for yeah, Jin for the piggy. Yeah, take the first turret of the game. He's gonna jungle around the cannon. Deny cannon from having too much impact. Gragas already used his cask, so only delaying this turret take. 
Yeah. This uh, explosive barrel not going to be doing too much as Prey is able to take that one down oh. and BDD trades up in the mid lane as well. Taking the inner turret, the map is just goes wherever the Yasuo is. And Yasuo gives up another minion wave, another turret. Oh, it's Son Baron. Okay. They check the pit. Dragon goes down in favor of King's own. Very He's easy. Down. They sideset the cube, Prey yeah. didn't know. Oh, flies forward and Prey just gets knocked up. He's in a bouncy castle as Nova landed the death sentence, but it could be his own and he is going to go down. It is going to be traded, so we've got both of the supports dying here. Teddy? As Teddy jumps forward, it's a double kill for the Yasuo Zonya's fantastic timing from the Swain, but he does eventually fall. And now Grace a little bit too low. Khan looking for his opportunity as the barrel for the disengage once again uh -oh. is there for so on. He flashes into the trouble bubble though, and that is not what you you want BDD, not a lot of options that he has. That flash from Humpty was real fat, but not quite enough. And can Grace actually get on top of this fight? He wants the knock up, does get it onto Khan in the back line and is able to escape, at least for now. He's charged up the flow, but he can't get there. It's the one-two punch from Kuz. The explosive cask is in, goes Kuz towards the bottom side. It's going to be a three versus one. The cask ain't great from the Gragas this time. And Kuz is going to lock down the kill. Jinnah. Want to make use of this, Get but the never move. They will be able to grab the QSS, but that's about it. And four Drakes once again. Well, obviously, his Drunken Rage is going to help because he's going to find the Sejuani Umpty in trouble now as the hook lands, but that's a very dead Miss Piggy. Teleport flies forward. Khan still wants more as Nova just dies. Okay, Windwall's going to stop the onslaught, but King's... Well, Teddy takes about a billion damage from that paddle star. He does throw down his ultimate as King's own do pull away from the Baron. Flashes forward just to try and get some more, but he knew he wasn't getting anything there. The flash was odd in King's own. Not going to jump fully off the Baron. They'll be able to take it down now. Yeah, that was silly from Teddy. Now his summoner is down. Wanted to live longer by flashing Not be picked mercilessly by cousin friends before that happened. Well, I feel like the execution pop-ups. Well, Grace just having a great time. Clears out the minion wave. Yeah, pull them apart until you actually this have. This wave, you mentioned two. Certainly could be the one as Cuz. He got a lot of work done bottom lane, and that's going to buy them the time. They just tank it up. Nova has to flash. Gets himself the shield from the Dark Passage, but will lose the inhibitor. Top lane's going to fall. It's dominoes now as the whole base is torn apart. Oh. Cuz, very close to this Jin Air roster, jumps his way forward, he's ignored. Just the inhibitors are going to be the options, goes down to his Guardian Angel as BDD jumps forward, executes the Swain, and this could just be it. The explosive cask was decent, but the Yasuo just evaporated. Kingzone, they haven't lost anyone yet, and they're looking to take down the base. It is going to be one-to-one. -one. It feels like history is repeating itself as they had so much damage. The Nexus just This is actually how it's going to work out. You know, don't really understand what the heck King Zone's doing, so they're just going to lock away an Ezreal for Teddy and say, okay, we'll give Ocean Drake, five minutes, happy, happy times for his lane, especially Anivia. She's uh, super stoked about this. Yeah. They definitely just want to kill Umti. They might get him here. Yep, he's going to face check. Does manage to get the stun into the taunt. The layering of CC is nice, but misses the justice punch. And now Kuz, after flashing over the wall, just has to wait. Maybe we need some changes to other trees where there's value, so you don't just take stopwatch every time. It's BDD could just be dead. Yeah, he could very, very well and truly be dead. Umpty takes that one down. Third shot, pretty easy. And not a lot the Gargoyle could do. That one happened. Yeah, one uh, Anivia could be in a lot of trouble. Yep, the flash does come in. Grace doesn't respect it. This has happened before. Goes into the stopwatch before the egg is there, though. And Umpty's going to turn up. Lambs of Spite is available as God Cuz just melted. Gorilla tries to get in there. Remember, this is not a tanky Sejuani. And you know what she does? She dies right into the middle of the team and taken down with the flash frost. Grace. That stopwatch timing was about as perfect as you like. And it's not a drill, Atlas. Jin Air just outplayed King Zone super hard. A lot of ults used, all mismanaged. Trying to turn on to Khan and zone him away, and they want this turret. Yeah, BDD was thinking about the flash taunt, but... He look. was only going to get Nova, no one else. They're actually smartly on the top side of the mid lane rather than hugging the wraps Skips over the wall. Feels confident enough to go for the engage. Teddy, this could be a problem. Black Shield is going to eat up any potential CC. Double and the skill shots him. go wide. He's looking for that E to come back up, but doesn't get it in time. And Khan is able to get the pick off. Now King Zone looking for Nova. And with four members down here with a flash, they'll be able to do it eventually after the stopwatch comes down. Meanwhile, Kuz is just going to die in the river. Well, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, that was really dumb.
Why is he there? The rest of his team was already cutting off one member. No one can respond to the Vladimir. Don't need to give up a kill there, Cuz. Whoops, goes to the Cuz. Side of the map. Nova's here, spots it all out as Jinnet are able to set up for this one. The bombs are going to go wide as Umpty. Not going to be able to steal away the dragon, but can they get the fight? They get a whole bunch of flashes, but not much. So far, Jinnet is going to take a turret for it. Probably going to be a turret for turret trade extended. Zillion had kind of given up on this by going bot top lane, so it made sense overall. But if they hear that the Rift Herald goes down, it might mean that four members just stay here on the bottom side of the map. Try and take down this turret. And it looks like they are certainly going to do that. Shelly's going to cry out in anguish as she gets taken down. But Khan, he gets hit by the bind, and that's a dead Kenny. This pick CC working out real well for Jin Epic due to the fact that they have so much dive potential with all of their untargetability and safety. King's own will trade, but it's one for the speed. Got a fair bit of AP as well, so these bombs are really starting to rip things through. But is it going to be enough as Khan is on the bottom side? No TP wards for him to actually come for a flank. So they'll probably greed for this last hit. They get it. Now they have very extended lanes. Five for Jin Air. There's no one there, so it's a freebie. Yeah, a little bit of a scary position here for the Morgana as Cuz is just going to jump on top of her. Soul Shackles comes in. Stopwatch not available because it was broken. Wombo is, is stacked against King Zone. They can swift push, no real answer. They can look for a pick. They have to use the Wom gauge, and thus the threat is lower. Jeanette can walk up so confidently. There's no threat. Yeah, they've jumped on top of Kuz. Does he have anything more? He's got another chrono shift as Prey throws out it yet again. He's got 40% CDR, so it's pretty easy, but he didn't have it that time. Not after three and a half seconds of being alive. Khan looking to do his best Smeb impression. Does do a lot of damage, but Hemoplague also able to get some work done. Lamb's Respite comes in and so on. Gets rid of Khan. Jin Air Green Wings decimating the fight because King Zone couldn't get the Wombo engage that they wanted. Khan as well, he does a lot of damage to these structures. We'll see whether he can actually poke down the Nexus turrets as well now with barrened up minions. Thankfully, Prey gets there. Baron is going to get taken, and Jin Air, 10,000 gold is the lead here. That's what we see from King Zone. And I guess the question that we come down to now, Izzy, who had a great performance on the Kindred in game number one, maybe needed a little bit more respect. He's able to dance around and break open the base. The Baron already reaping the rewards for Jin Air. 12,000 gold, now the lead. Four Dragons. There were five this game. But four once again stacked up on top of Jin Air. If it is going to go down, King Zone, they need to try and find this Wombo. They've got the buttons ready, well, but they don't the have a cannon. Yep, cannons out of the fight. Here goes the inhibitor turret. At some point, someone's going to have to flash in and make something happen. Otherwise, Dude. the sort of defensive terrain that Wombo is going to do so reliably a big number on. Finally take down this third inhibitor. Uh, can They know cannons there. Yeah. Well, he's uh, going to try and flash in, get some work done, but he explodes. Uh, uh, Hero's oh. entrance is going to deliver another kill over to Jin Air. Does get a Justice Punch, gets a knock-up, but that's a GA, and that's a very dead Galio. I think Jin Air understand what's going on here. They try to do whatever they can to get the Desperation engage, but King Zone know that it's all just a matter of time. Jin Air will take down the last inhibitor. They may not need Barons. They may not need anything more as so on. Just dives forward. Seraphs, is it enough? No, it's not as so on. Just pops in with the Hemo Plague. This Vladimir is so damn big. It's a grin, a sly grin on the face of Prey, but this is going to be the 2-1 victory going over to Jin Air Green Wings. They're second in a row and some reinvigoration for the